good looking, charming, articulate. I'm not just talking about Kyle Bowen. I'm talking about Tom Melander. Bonus Tom Melander talk coming up next here on Locked on Canucks. Your Locked on Canucks, your daily podcast on the Vancouver Canucks. Part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. Thanks for hitting the play button on today's episode of Locked on Canucks. My name is Trevor Beggs, Canucks writer and credentialed media member for Daily Hive Vancouver. And before we dive into today's show, we want to thank you for listening to Locked on Canucks. It's your team every day. Make sure you subscribe or follow for absolutely free on YouTube or wherever you listen to podcasts on today's show. Yes, we got to talk about someone who is very good looking, very articulate, and why it's easy to see uh, why the Canucks fell in love with this guy. And again, we're not talking about the co-host here of Locked On Canucks, although it's it's applicable. It's applicable. Uh, We're also (laughs) going to get into Trevor's notes presented by Kyle, touching on a number of things, including Akito Hirose, his new deal, and where he'll be on the roster next season. But first and foremost, someone who is almost as good looking as Tom Melander and as Kyle Bowen. How are you doing, brother? Dude, you've called this guy good looking. This 18-year-old good looking four times in the beginning of this episode, man. You you in love with this guy, man. It, Just you, like the it, Vancouver Canucks are. Dude, it's it's something else. Something else. Kyle Bound, Trevor Beggs, your team every day. Locked on Canucks. We'll get to Common Corner at the end of the show. Uh Monday, man. Is it is this a holiday? Is this a holiday? Nope. Not for us, man. Locked on Canucks <laughs> every day. And, and Tom Willander, man, he keeps saying the right things. He keeps saying the right things, and I think for a fan base that has had to endure endure a lot with its prospects, but also a lot with some of its leaders talking in the past. And I'm talking about Jim Benning. I'm talking about Willie D. You know, just just having those guys talk. I know they're not players, but having again their material be clipped and captioned over the years, it was just traumatizing. And here we have Tom Melander. Uh, we need hope. It's all we have. He's the 11th overall pick from this year. He was the best player available. And again, he's saying all the right things. He, he knows it's an honor. It's an honor being picked by the Vancouver Canucks at number 11. They took a chance on him. He, I, th- I think based on all the reports about his maturity and again, his quotes from a couple days ago and now what he said yesterday about again, being the 11th overall pick, I'm going to make make sure they made the right decision. Paraphrase him with that standard he's given. I believe in him. I think he's going to put his effort, put the effort in and he's going to get a lot better over the next year. A lot better. I think. He is going to be one of the most, like the, the fastest rising prospects from this draft. He's giving me that energy, man. Did we get one of the best players in this year's entry draft? I think so. Well, I, I'm here to even note a little bit, Kyle, because, you know, you keep saying best player available, and that's not really what I believe, but uh, I hope I'm wrong. I hope Tom Melander was the best player available at 11th overall. Hopefully, he's a top 10 player uh, from this draft class when all is said and done, which would be pretty remarkable because. It's uh, supposed to be a pretty deep draft. You know, that's that's what they kept, they kept saying around draft time. Uh, but yeah, it's... Tar Harvey mentioned as much, Canucks Director of Amateur Scouting. He mentioned as much um, about Tom Melander when he was interviewed about him after the draft. And one of the first things he brought about in terms of, you know, why did he select this guy was his character. His character, mm-hmm. Kyle. His uh, desire to get better. You know, the fact that he's sacrificing some money by playing in the SHL uh, to go play in the NCAA because he's got a set set on the Canucks. And I think the answers he gave and, and, you know, in really both press conferences, right. The one right, right after the draft. And then over the weekend here at Canucks development camp, um, they made you feel good, right? He's mm-hmm. talking about, you know, wanting to win championships in the city, carry on the legacy of great Swedish players in Vancouver. Um, a guy that's, you know, not even, not just mature beyond his years at, you know, 17, 18 years old. Uh, he's more mature than I am. And, I, and I'm almost 30. <laughs> <laughs> no, he, def- he definitely is. What are you talking about? He's on that level. Like yeah. I feel like, okay, maybe in your life now, you know, you got to 30, you're raising a family, you're, you're, you're a hardworking man. Maybe, yeah, you're right. Right now, you're at that time in your life where you're a bit more mature and you're more oriented and more structured. Whereas these guys, and in most cases, this is always the case with, you know, athletes who get drafted in the first round or just in, in the draft in general, those, those kids, those guys, those young adults have had it since they were six years old, seven years old, waking up, you know, every morning, getting good grades, going to practice, doing their thing. It's just another another level of discipline that you and I did not have growing up. Who, who we blaming? Who we blame there? The parents or our character? <laughs> That's a conversation for another day, okay? It's <laughs> just the truth. Yeah. We were just kids, Trevor. 
we were just kids. Any who locked on Canucks, your team every day. Tom Willander, you're right. I think he he has it. You can tell early. And I mean, the rest is going to be up to him and the work ethic and the execution. The execution is the most important part, but he's instilling a lot of confidence in the fan base right now. And we need that. We need that. We, that that instills hope because the on ice product hasn't given given us that. So whenever we pick guys or whenever we sign guys to join, you know, join join the best coast, the West coast in Canada, you want them speaking like this. Yeah, I know. First and foremost, you know, in terms of our maturity, Kyle, I just want to say going to high school in Surrey had nothing to do with it. You know, <laughs> Surrey, Surrey, no. uh, the, the best place on earth, the future lives here. Mm -hmm. um, nothing, nothing about going to high school in the neighborhood of Newton affected my maturity. Uh, nope. I don't care what they say. Um, in terms of Tom Willander, so he, here's the thing that's on my mind, Kyle, and you know, I'm pessimistic begs you over here. I know you're ready to slap me across the computer uh, from <laughs> saying this, but you know, being being charming, good looking, and articulate is one thing. You know, some other guys in the, who were recently on the Canucks who were charming, articulate, and good looking. I think you know who I'm going to say, right? Who? Eric Branson. That guy uh. was a charming, articulate <laughs> dude. Didn't mean anything. He was a bad hockey player. So, you know, at the end of the day, it's like it's great to be charming. And, oh, and good man. Looking. How many times do we say on the old network that, you know, being good looking and charming gets you a long ways in life? Um, no, we did say that. You know what they call it? You know what they call it, Trevor? And maybe you, you, you've used this card many times in your life, right? It's called pretty privilege, pretty privilege. <laughs> no, no, that's what they actually call it. There's like some turn, turn, like, you know, there's some science behind it or something, some psychology, some, some weird stuff in 2022, 2023. You know, you talk about these things and there's that thing called pretty privilege. I hope this has nothing to do with that, bro. I yeah. could care. No, we don't give a, on this side of the world. We don't care, man. Just get us dubs, get us dubs. Who cares if you're good looking? We don't give a, just get us dubs. That's what the city needs. And again, he's instilling confidence. He is. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and I think it's uh, worth noting too, that, you know, as Canuck development camp goes on here uh, from reports of the guys down there, I haven't been down there, you know, it's as much as it's locked on Canucks, your team every day. I'd love to be down there, but I got to spend time with my family too. Okay. I got to spend time with oh, my family. Oh man, come on, uh, man. Come I on. Look I, what you're I, doing, I thought man. about it. The family I before us. About it. Yeah, no, my bad. My bad. Kyle, you, you don't got a family. Why aren't you a development camp right now? What's going Dude, on? Come on, man. I, come on. I got to earn my role. I got to put in an 82 game schedule first. You know what I'm saying, bro? All right. All right. You got to put your work in to get there. Okay. It's been a while since I've done that. Okay. It's just the truth, man. Yo, come yeah. on, man. We're talking about again the West Coast, the best coast. I know you got a lot to say here, but I got to give a shout out to the people, man. The people holding the microphones, telling the stories. They're some of the most talented people in sports media in North America. It's just the truth. And some of the kindest. You know who's one of the best? Clay. Canucks Clay, man. He's been mm -hmm, doing it for mm -hmm. the West Coast. Vancouver, the city, entertaining for it. Feels like a decade and a half. A decade and yeah. a half, okay? Salute to that guy. Anyways, Trevor Beggs, continue on your little spiel about Tom Willander. I think the main thing I was going to say is that, you know, reports from guys down there and even from watching clips is that Tom Willander's the best skater among all of the 40 Perfect. prospects down the Canucks development camp right now. Um, and even in his interview, he talked about how he felt rusty because he hadn't been in, out there in a, out skating in a couple of weeks. Uh, he was wearing new equipment. So the fact that he can, you know, he's gone through a lot, obviously, in the past few days. Um, but, yeah, to be off the ice for a while, I've been thinking about the draft, not skating, and then show up at development camp with guys who are like 22, 23 years old in some cases uh, and be the best skater at development camp says something. And I think it's a main reason why the Canucks drafted him. Um, you know, I think a lot of scouts agree that he was the best skating defenseman uh, in the draft. I, I, I mean, I watched Axel Tandy and Palika. I think he's up there as well. Dimitri Simashev moves well for his size, but I think there's a good argument to be made that Tom Willander uh, is the best skating defenseman of the draft. And, and that matters. You know, you know, you know what you got to do in today's NHL, Kyle? You got to skate. You yeah, and skate. that matters. And that matters, man. Again, so he's going to be one of the best skaters out of this draft playing defense. Pretty obvious. Pretty obvious. You know, if like if guys are down there like Faber and whatnot, they're showing us the clips, they're doing the homework for us, and they're saying similar things, you know, come on. There's some truth to it, okay? There's some truth to it. Do you know anyone else in the world that watches more junior games than Chris Faber? That guy's been doing it for like three years, four years, man. Unbelievable. Yeah. Okay. So, so this dude again has the wheels, has the work ethic, and he's going to North America ASAP to play in the NCAA ASAP again, ASAP to get what's the word? Acclimated? Is that the word? Uh, what's acclimated. the word? Is that? Acclimated. The acclimated. Acclimated. I'm trying yeah. over here. Okay. Kyle Bound. Acclimated with North American ice. There's, there's just something about that mentality. It's, it's, it looks like he has the recipe to, again, surprise a lot of people, a lot of people, a lot of people coming out of this draft. And I'm grateful that he's a Vancouver Canuck. And he plays defense. That's really important. Okay. Cause look how excited we got for Carson Soucy and Ian Cole. Like I was, 
Did you hear me on that episode? Oh, I'm guaranteeing the playoffs because we got two number five defensemen <laughs> signed to the team. Yeah, that's uh, uh, you were you were on one, man. You were on <laughs> one. I was like, geez, Carson Susie, Ian Cole, and Teddy Bluger come to town and hold hold your horses, Canucks are winning the Stanley Cup. Let's go, buddy. Let's go. Oh, man. I know, I know you've been hitting the gym and you've been putting that good karma in the atmosphere. You're going to be in the best shape of your life come September. I'm of happy course, to hear man. that. Uh, we talked about good skating defense. But you know who else can skate pretty well is Akito Hirose. We're going to talk about him on the other side. And Trevor's notes presented by Kyle. And one more quick tease as well. Uh, you know, Kyle, you talked about uh, media personalities. I got that story in terms of a Canucks prospect um, okay. and a desire to be a media personality. Some of you might have okay. heard it. But if you haven't heard about it, stay tuned for that coming up next. But first, I got to shout out FanDuel. Okay, take your first swing at betting MLB on FanDuel and get 10 times your first bet amount and bonus bets up to oh. $200. That's right. Just bet 20 bucks and you'll land $200 in bonus bets, win or lose. That's 200 you can spend betting on everything from the money line to the over under to who you think is going to hit the first home run. All on an app that's safe, secure, and super easy to use. Plus, when you win, you get paid instantly. Whoa. There's no better place to bet on the MLB than FanDuel, America's number one sports book. So sign up today and visit FanDuel.com slash locked on to get up to $200 in bonus bets. That's FanDuel.com slash locked on. FanDuel, official partner of Major League Baseball. Okay, okay, we're back here on Locked On Canucks, your team every day. Kyle Bow and Trevor Beggs. Gotta ask the question, man. Not just to the people, okay? You can let us know in the comments too. But I want to ask Trevor, man, how how was the uh, the weekend? One of the first long weekends since the family grew. You know, like overall, how you feeling? I'm I'm feeling really good, man. Like I said, I think uh, the highlight of the weekend was spending you know six seven hours at the beach on Canada Day before before we recorded uh, uh, that Canada Day episode. By the way, go check that episode out. Go check it out uh, when we facts, recap facts, everything facts. the Canucks did on July first. But other than that, man, yeah, it's 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 been really nice. Lots of family time. You know, I think as a kid in my young 20s, I wasn't so family oriented. I was all about, you know, friends of my family, friends of my family, and always just going to see the homies. But, you know, now as you get older uh, and you got kids, you realize that family is pretty damn important. So definitely spending more time with the family uh, as I get older here. Oh, that's beautiful. And family is the most uh, important thing for real. For real, man, it's not It's not what's on your phone, man. It's not what's o- over here on this side, you know. It's uh, what's in front of your eyes. And if you're fortunate enough to have – you know, beautiful family members around you, beautiful friends. Well, that's all you need. For real, for real, for real. And apparently, you also need some Akito Hirose. And uh, am I saying the last name right? Because I feel as if a lot of Canucks fans like him, and I got to start saying his name right, because I think he might play like 74 games or 82 this year. How do I say his name? Yeah, Akito? I mean, I... Akito, Akito Hirose, you got it right. Oh, okay. Perfect, man. There you go, man. There you go. Okay, let's there talk about go. Akito there you go. and some more Canucks news via Trevor and his notes on Trevor's Notes. Okay, first off, let's talk about him. The contract, two years, Akito Hirose. I think one year is a two-way deal. Uh, the next year is a one-way deal, if I'm correct. Overall, Canucks fans seem to be happy. Canucks fans are already comparing this guy to Chris Tanev. And this is another reason why the Canucks had to get rid of OEL. And this is another reason why the Canucks may get rid of Myers as well. Revamp the back end with intelligent players who have poise. That's the standard. And I know it's early in this guy's career, but again, to get compared to Chris Tanev, that's a pretty obscure comparison. And I think this side of the, you know, this side of the fan base. Of the NHL, they know a thing or two, and they may be right. Uh, what are your thoughts on Akito Arose? Yeah, I mean, I, I really liked what I saw from him um, for the Canucks in seven games there. I wasn't like maybe as bullish as some people, but at the end of the day, this guy was playing with Tyler Myers, who, as usual, looked pretty lost out there. I think that's a pretty <laughs> tough thing to do to come into the NHL and be paired alongside Tyler Myers. Um, although, <laughs> let's be real here. If Akito Arose does make the Canucks, uh, out of camp and he makes the opening night roster he'll likely be playing alongside tyler myers because i think that top four is pretty set with whoa, whoa, whoa. Hughes, through c cole and heronic some combination of those four um but that being said you know i think kido rose showed he has the poise he has the smarts um he's even got a bit of offensive playmaking ability like he's got tools to be an nhl defenseman and i might go out on a limb here and say i think he might have to leg up on being the canucks sixth defenseman 
in 2023-24. Um, I think on another episode here, maybe, maybe later this week, maybe next week, we got to touch on all these depth defensemen because it's a competition, right? They got Jose, Will Lannan, Breezeball, Rathbone, another Canucks side, Matt Irwin. There's a lot of guys, I think, competing for not that many roster spots. Um, but, uh, you know, I think Akito Hirose has as good a chance as any of those guys I mentioned of making this team. And, and I find this trend interesting too, Kyle. Once again, the Canucks signed a defenseman to a two-year deal. First season is two-way. Second season is one-way. They did the same with Jack Rathbone. They did the same with Guillaume Brisebois recently as well. I might even be missing a defender, to be honest. But um, uh, interesting uh, interesting rewards uh, for these guys. I mean, at least they don't make the team. Uh, they'll be making uh, the big boy NHL bucks, whether they're in the minors or not. It's good motivation. Well, it's well not. deserved. It's it's well deserved, you know. If, if for guys like um, Breeze Boy, you know, he, he he put his work in for a long time, and then he's doubling down with committing to the Vancouver Canucks. He has that opportunity to possibly make the team and make more money. And he could have looked elsewhere, but since he's you know in the system and the Canucks are familiar with them, that you know they they're scratching his back and he's scratching theirs. It's one of those things, and, and now he's got to go earn it. And Akito. I know he has to earn it too, but another guy that has to earn it as well going into training camp is Tyler Myers. It's Tyler Myers. Yeah. You know, I don't know the math on this, and it's maybe not a lot because I feel as if more people would be talking about it, right? And you probably know. But let's say he's not one of the best six defensemen out of camp. Can they, if they can't trade him, can they waive him? Yep, 100%. And they can. That may happen. There's a new standard in Vancouver, and we, we said those words, right? Poise, intelligence. Tyler Myers has not shown that. Maybe he's playing too much. He's playing in the wrong role, but he's getting paid to play in the top four. All that being said, he has not shown a lot of intelligence or poise in his time with the Vancouver Canucks, especially last year where it was just, it was too much for him. It was too much for him. So there's yeah. a new standard. There's a new standard. Uh, you want to touch on that? Yeah, hundred percent. I was just going to say, you know, if the Canucks did wave Tyler Myers, they'd save 1.15 million under the yeah. cap. Um, so Myers, what is that? You know, almost 5 million of his contract would still be on the books in terms mm -hmm. of salary cap, at least. Um, I, I, I'm very curious if they go down that road. And I think, you yeah. know, this is a tease to tomorrow's episode. I do want to talk about, you know, the Canucks cap situation, because right now I think they're as a cap fairly 2.48 million over the cap, but how much are they actually, uh, over the cap right now? So we'll break that down on tomorrow's episode, but I think one, one option, if you're looking to, you know, save a few hundred thousand dollars would be yeah. to bury Tyler Myers in the minors. And, you know, depending on what they do with the cap, um, that could be advantageous at some point down the road, whether it's opening night or not. And obviously, there's still the trade rumors out there, but I, I personally have a hard time seeing Tyler Myers get traded. But hey, it just takes one general manager, Kyle. You know, it just takes one guy, yeah. just one yeah. guy. And it only takes a couple bad preseason games for Tyler Myers to get wa waived. Sorry, in October. Uh, note number two. I'm going to move this up to number two, and that's Teddy Bluger talk. Apparently, taking the number fifty-three. Who cares? Who cares? Let him have it for free. For real. Who cares? Who wore thirty? Who wore fifty-three before? <laughs> Nobody. Nobody, all right? Nobody wore number 53 before. So it's all good. Let him have it. Now, I'm hearing a lot of people also not complain, but make note of the fact that Teddy Bluger is not an offensive center, and he's more like a fourth-line center, right? That's what they're saying, which is somewhat the truth. But this is this version of the Vancouver Canucks. Next year's not their, it's not their time to win the Stanley Cup. You know what I'm saying? They still got to take the next step. He's good right now, and I, I think I'm putting that energy out there because unless it's a trade, and it makes hockey sense in that sense. They This team, again, doesn't have to go to the auction. They don't got to go to the auction. They got to play the course. And right now in its trajectory, it's totally fine to have Teddy Bluger, if anything, as your third-line center. And if he's paired up, let's say Garland does stick around. At least Garland is a good hockey player, and you can drive a, drive a bit of play on a line. You know what I'm saying? Now, I did also look at this, and Bexy's probably going to want to shut me up, but I looked at some of the, the UFAs next year playing center okay i underline some of their names sam reinhardt who else do we got here backland uh, we backland. got that Enberg guy and your guy jack rock rock roslovich anyway <sighs> next year's not the year next year's not the year they don't got to go all in next year right that, the season that's coming up I and mean, maybe next off season they bring in one of those guys to be to be uh their three c because they're not drafting anyone developing they don't have anyone in the system it's got to be down that route and i don't think teddy bluger's a long-term plan to be the three c pretty obvious pretty yeah 100 percent. And, and you know again i think we'll touch on it this week too because you know if the canucks do make a trade um and i think it's definitely still possible alvin talked about still being in the market which of course he's going to say but i still think it's possible the canucks could trade a winger if they do so they do it they do potentially have room to sign another guy 
you know, the guy we mentioned as the top target for third line center, Pius Suter, is one of, uh, it's actually still unsigned. Um, again, you know, you look at the list that you mentioned, and pretty much every guy you mentioned might be better uh, mm-hmm. than Pius Suter. Maybe not. And they probably know that. Penalty kill. They've looked at um, that list. They've looked at that yeah. list. Yeah. Oh, you think so? But I think Sam Reinhardt's <laughs> name that stands out to me. Sam Reinhardt again. Shout out to North Vancouver, North Vancouver zone. He was a th- third line center for Florida for a good chunk of last season. And he was really rock solid defensively. Like he's really rounded out his game. So obviously he'd be an expensive player, but he'd, got, he'd be a guy I had, I'd have my eye on. There you go, man. There you go. We're doing research here, man. We're doing research here on both ends. Locked on Canucks, your team, every day. I'm going to read one more note because we are running out of time. Hunter Bruzelwitz. Brusselwitz, Brutzelwitz. All right, this dude's third round <laughs> pick for your Vancouver Canucks, right? I think I'm getting that getting that right. Apparently, he yeah. wants to be the next Stephen A. Smith. Uh, elaborate. Yeah, I just uh, I, I heard this in his media availability, and I know Daniel Wagner passed to Bulas wrote an article about it as well. Uh, but this guy said that hockey's not his only goal. He wants to be in sports broadcasting at some point Legend. in his life too, and he looks to see Stephen A. Smith as inspiration. So. Not too often you hear that from a draft, like a guy who just got drafted to the NHL. It's like, yeah, I actually want to be a broadcaster. <laughs> so I know, it caught my eye. But hey, Stephen A. Smith, you know, you want to stir the pot. You want to do things right. You know, young Hunter Brussels Sprouts is uh, he's young. He's malleable. Um, and, you know, I, that's set the bar high, man. Set the bar high. Hunter, Hunter Brussels Sprouts, dude. Dude, it's 2023, dude. And Trevor's just coming from the. Oh. The buttons are not working right now, but just I, one, I love, two, I, one, I two, love Brussels sprouts, man. What are you talking about? Oh, that was ow, a little oh, loud. I'm sorry. Oh, man. This guy came from the top rope, man. I, I like Brussels sprouts too, man. Very underrated. Very yeah. underrated. They got great Brussels sprouts. Where? Come on. I know the name of this restaurant, bro. Oh, man. This is going to hurt. I'm going to say the Greek. The Greek? The Greek. I think, honestly, sure. I don't need, I, there's, there's, no, the, the Greek's a great restaurant in Gastown, but. Brussels sprouts, man. There's a restaurant downtown that does it does it too well. Too well with a little honey. It's burnt too. Ooh. It's nice. Ooh. Anyways, locked on Canucks, your team every day. Common corner on the other side. Begsy, do we have to cut to an ad break? We shouting anyone out. Uh, what's the situation? Just pausing for a pee break. See you on the other side here on Locked on Canucks. Okay, okay. You're back. Locked on Canucks, your team every day. Trevor Beggs, Kyle Bowen, subscribe, hit the like button, leave us a review on Spotify, or Apple Podcast. do your thing, one love. If you're new to the show, welcome. If you're an OG, an OG like the rest of them, one love. You know the deal, you're getting, you're getting invited to the wedding. It's the truth. Okay, Comic Corner it's coming at you, right? It's going to be, come on, eight years from now? It keeps going, seven to eight years. You know, the recession's kind of throwing things off. But anyways, conversation for another day. Common Corner. Uh, my favorite part of the show, Trevor Beggs likes this part as well. Uh, we got one from, how do you say this guy's name here? We got, Ro- okay, anyways, people need to realize the mess that Benning made was BS. I- I'm paraphrasing that. Uh, he left this organization in shambles. It's going to take time to recover. I think that's pretty obvious. I think that's pretty obvious, but this doesn't have to take eight years. It doesn't have to take, you know what I'm saying? It, we're talking about Rutherford and Alvin, Pittsburgh Penguins. You're, you're rep in Vancouver. Do this in four. Do this in four. Do this in three. And next year's year two, right? Come on. Yeah, I mean. We deserve it. Look, the, the, the way I look at it, I mean, really, the, the, the rest of Benning's bad contracts. Look at the defense. I mean, the last, like, Tyler Myers is pretty much the only holdover still, right? Unless oh, Quinn Hughes as well. But obviously, Quinn Hughes is one of the few good things Benning did. Um, fell into his freaking lap. Eisenman did. Eisenman did. It's a, it's a yeah. Oh game. man. Yeah. Shout out to Steve Eisenman. Oh man. Was he actually, was he even with Detroit at the time? I don't think he was, but I could be wrong. Maybe. Yeah. You probably, you probably, yeah. yeah. The Ken Holland made Anyways. that mistake, right? I think Anyways. Ken made that mistake. Yeah. Yeah. That doesn't, doesn't matter. At the end of the day, you know, you look at, this is the second off season for Alvin and Rutherford, you know, by next off season, you know, Myers will be off the books. Pearson will be off the books. Like, you know, at that point, it's like the contracts that are on the books, the Canucks have signed, right? It's Makayev, it's Miller. It's the Pedersen extension, you know, uh, Horvat's gone. Um, so yes, sir. yeah, exactly. So I think, you know, by this time next off season, the betting excuse and cleaning up Benning's mess is, is no longer an excuse. It's, it's really an excuse maybe for one more year. Wait, wait, did Benning sign Besser to an extension or Alvin and Rutherford? No, that was Alvin. That was Alvin and Rutherford. Oh, okay. There you go. Okay. Just, you know, clarifying yeah. Kyle Bowen, Trevor Beggs, Locked on Canucks, your team every day. Okay. Second comment. We have a, actually a, a wave of comments here. Okay. Cause Harpoon. Mm. Harpoon 
Wave is is something else. Okay, he he's saying right here, Tyler Myers and Jonathan Lacaramaki to San Jose for a third round pick. This guy is just giving up on Jonathan Lacaramaki. I haven't really been following. I, I've been on Twitter a lot. I, I'm addicted to this stuff right now. I've seen a little bit of Jonathan Lacaramaki. It's only been two days. I'm not going to look too much into it. Uh, but how are you feeling about uh, last year's first round pick? Please just put some optimism there. Okay, you know what? Just don't don't tell me the truth. Be positive only right now. Okay, please. Yeah, you know, Kyle, I started off this episode by being uh, pessimistic. Begsy talking about uh, how good Branson was charming and good looking, just like with Lander. But with Lacaramaki, you know, he went through a lot, right? Injuries, mono, the whole nine yards, and it really affected his season. And I do think the Lacaramaki you saw in the Allsvenskan playoffs is the real Lacaramaki. You know, he earned that entry level contract with the Canucks at the end of last season. Again, people characterize it as a brutal season, but. Uh, you know, you gotta have a short term memory sometimes, right? And uh, I think yeah, he was able to finish, overcome man. obstacles and put in a really good play. Yeah, put on a really good playoff performance. So I'm definitely still high on the Karamaki for sure. Why not? Okay, there you go. Thank you, man. Thanks for, thanks for, because I feel like you're lying to the people a bit there, but you did it for the people. And I really, really do appreciate that. Okay. <laughs> Comment number three from Matt. Okay. We're going to be better than the Leafs. I love it. Oh my God. Carson Susie, Ian Cole, and Teddy Bluger. Two number four and a half defensemen, right? And a fourth line center. And this team's better than the Maple Leafs. I love the energy, man. And, okay, maybe it's not necessarily the players that have made us feel so, like, high on the Canucks. I think it's the contract lengths. And it just it's, it feels good. It feels good that, oh, man, they made these types of moves that aren't really going to – like, I know they're their bets for next season, but it's not really going to hurt the Canucks. Like, these guys are not the make-or-break players of the Vancouver Canucks. I know they fill up some holes that the Canucks needed to fill up, but let's be honest and let's be real. And there's some faith in this. There is some hope in this statement. This team goes where Demko, Pedersen, and Hughes take it. And if Pedersen plays at the same level as last year, maybe gets better, that'd be a blessing. That'd be a blessing. And if Hughes does him and gets better, he doesn't even have to get better. If he just does him, I'm going to put all the pressure on Demko. If Demko is Demko, whatever that means, but if Demko is Demko, the Vancouver Canucks are going to be fine. And guys like Bluger and Susie and Cole make it a little bit easier for them to take the next step. Is the next step them winning a Stanley Cup? No, but it's the next step. Get, get to being competitive. Like, let us see that light. Yeah, I completely agree, man. And um, I'll make a bold prediction right now, okay? The Leafs will have a better regular season than the Canucks, but the Canucks will go farther in the playoffs in oh, Toronto next season. <laughs> That's Trevor my bold Peg. prediction here for Locked On Canucks. Let's go. July 3rd takes. I love it. You know what? You you take it from here, baby. You take it from here. Sign us out. Locked On Canucks, your team right, every day. Kyle go. Bound, Trevor Beggs. Let us know in the comments who's going to have the better season next season between the Toronto Maple Leafs and the Vancouver Canucks. And if you say Maple Leafs, we don't want to hear it. Keep it to yourselves. <laughs> Get um, out of here. But, you know, com coming up later up this week, I do want to talk about the Canucks cap situation, okay? How much cap do the Vancouver Canucks actually have? Um, you know, and can they have another perfect cap scenario like they did last year? And if you don't know what I'm talking about, stay tuned for tomorrow's episode. I also want to talk about teams that should be in the market for the Vancouver Canucks, Connor Garland. We talked about how trading it might be a mistake. Um, but again, hey, if you're going to trade him, there should be some teams that want him because he's still a damn good player. Uh, we'll also get what free agents the Canucks should still be interested in and maybe the best and worst a former Canuck contract in free agency. But for now, I'm Trevor Beggs. That guy's Cal Bowen. And you've been listening to Locked On Canucks.